Hey guys and welcome to this side dish here. This is just a quick tip on how to use vector blur or motion blur or actually not on how to use them but when to use which because as you might know vector blur is much faster than motion blur however it's got a few issues and I'm going to try and demonstrate you what those issues are okay and it's going to be a rather short side dish I hope so let's just move that cube to over there let's just make an array out of that with a modifier array distance of 1.5 actually 2 or 2 is better and let's give it a count of let's say 10 with over there like this and then let's just make a second array um, and let's just actually make it so that that it's um, 2 over here as well actually over here like this I'm sorry zero or over there here we go and let's give it a count of like four okay so we have something to reflect now let's go to zero actually to one five orthographic like this control alt zero get the camera over here let's move it to over there let's just move it down around the x-axis like this actually like this that's enough okay now let's go in and add a plane scale it up a little bit let's rotate it around the x-axis like this um let me just see let's just make sure that the rays from the camera kind of hit the surface and bounce back to that thing over there so we have to rotate it a little bit more like this Now let's um, change that lamp into a sun lamp. Yellowish touch. I always like it a slightly yellowish touch. And now all we have to do is to create a material for this plane, which is pretty simple, really. We just turn on mirror at 100%. Okay. That's all we got to do. And we can actually turn down specularity to zero. We don't need specularity. Uh, if you want to save it, you can do so, but it's really not necessary in this case. Let's just move the plane to approximately there. And now let's just... Uh, those instincts all the time. F12 to render this. I can see that's what you get. Um, and let me just see. Let's just make it so that we can actually see a bit more than just... Let's just play with the focal length. Let's t turn that to, let's say, 30. Like this. Okay, F12 again. You can see that's what it looks like, and that's what it looks like. And now, in order to make it a bit more apparent that there is like a cut over here because the plane ends, we are also going to use the sun lamp to generate a sky for us, like this. Once again, F12. Here we go. Now you can see what this does. Okay, and so far so good. Actually, let's do one more thing just to make it a bit more clear. Let's select that. Let's go to E. Uh, to edit mode let's hit e s just to extrude that let's make sure the outer part of this um let's go to face select mode deselect the interface like this let's assign that to a new material let's just make that black here we go now if you hit f12 you can see oh and one other thing we have to make sure that let's just see what the problem is there delete face here we go. Now we've got it arranged in a way that it's supposed to do what you want. Let's just see what that looks like. Perfect. <clears throat> now you can see those reflections, okay? And now this is really not a problem. Usually if you want to uh, move that, you just put it over here. I, location. Let's go to frame like 50. It doesn't really matter. Let's move it over here. And let's hit I, location again. Now this moves, okay? Which is pretty cool. Next thing you would do to use a vector blur, which is the much faster version, you would go to the layers, you would activate vector, and then you wouldn't really do much more. You would just make sure that you're on a frame where you can actually see um, your object, like this, okay. You hit F12, like so. Now you go to the node editor, you go to um, the compositor, use nodes, backdrop, Control shift click on the render layers and then you get this output. 
Now you would just go in and add a, um, a, a, a what is it, filter vector node, vector blur over here. And by the way, if you do not really know how to use vector blur, you can watch one of my other tutorials in the first steps and preparation series that explains that quite well. Okay, now you use the C depth for this, this input and the speed for the speed. Okay, and now you should get a blurred image. Okay, you can see the plane is moving. And I can change that to like, like 128 increments, so it's a bit more smooth around the edges, you can see. In a second, come on. Okay, you can see it's a bit it's a bit smoother. You can see some artifacts over there, but that's really not a big problem. The main problem is that right now it looks as if um, either the cubes are moving as well, or it looks like the camera is moving relative to this plane, or just something is wrong. Okay. If you um, think about how it would look like if you stand in front of a train in the train, train station and the, the train moves past you, you can always see your own reflection in, in, in the windows of the train, okay? Even though the train as, as a whole is blurred because of the speed. And that's a problem that you cannot simulate with vector blur, because vector blur blurs everything, including the reflections, takes this object, okay, it sees, okay, this is an object, it moves, and then it calculates the, the vector speed for each uh, vertex of this object, okay, which is much, much faster than motion blur. So now let's try the same scene with motion blur. So let's just actually leave that as it is, and let's just activate motion blur down there, sampled motion blur, and let's go with 10 samples. And let me explain what this does. Um, right now, over here, we have really a lot of, like, um, let me just do this like this. Let's just hit in two, two over here. You can see that doesn't really work. Three, four, and now with four, you can see you have four different planes, so to say, that are then uh, uh, offset to each other. And it gives this moving um, illusion. If you have five, then it's five. Come on. With six, you have, once again, an improvement, eight, and so on. Um, now, it's the same over here. Uh, if you look at this, the samples. The more samples you have, the smoother your uh, interpolation, so to say. Now, uh, as you can see, before we had 128 for vector blur. Here we have 10. Uh, and this is, you can already see the problem here. And now if you render this, you can see, it calculates our image. And then again and again, and again, and again, and so on and so forth. And this really takes a lot of time, but you can see the mirrored reflections, they stay in the same place all the time, okay? And thus giving us this very realistic uh, result. Now if you compare those, um, of course, let's just uh, go to a split viewer like this. Can delete that for now. Of course, the vector blurred output looks a bit different right now because uh, we have um, uh, some more extra blur from the uh, motion blur. But you can still see the, the, the quality difference, right? I mean, it's pretty apparent. So, uh, what I want to say with this is that if you have moving objects in your scene that you want to blur with motion or vector blur, use vector blur whenever you can, uh, which means like for um, any kind of object that does not have uh, reflections, or at least that does not have such clear reflections, it is not that big of an issue with uh, smooth reflections, okay? If you have it the other way around, if you have like the camera parented, let's just go to frame one. Let's move that to over there like this. Let's parent this to the camera, uh, the camera to the plane, Control p object. Now you can see it moves along, okay? So right now if we render this at like over here, we hit F12. You can see motion blur really takes a lot of time to calculate. It just has to calculate the, the, the same image 10 times. But now you can see, although um, this object doesn't move relative to the camera, um, you've got motion blur on, on the cubes in the mirror. 
because what motion blur does it just renders several images with uh, sub steps like the steps in between frames and therefore you get this very cool blurred image now if you would do the same thing with uh, motion blur so let's uh, with vector blur let's just uncheck motion blur i feel you can see it's so much faster but now if you go to the node editor you can see nothing happens it doesn't blur the image at all okay and that's simply because um once again vector blur uses moving geometry okay and although relative to the camera um the objects move it cannot use that data to calculate the vector blur because the plane on which we can see those cubes doesn't move and only that geometry is uh, considered okay the geometry from the objects mirrored it does not get considered for vector blur and that is yeah that's the second um, thing you have so in both cases vector blur is wrong and motion blur is right okay uh, so yeah if you work with reflections use motion blur if you can if your scene allows it or if your render times allows it um, if they don't then you have to become creative uh, yeah anyway thank you for watching i hope you learned something i hope yeah i hope you liked it if you have any kind of comments or questions or whatever post it in the comment sections below of the videos uh, yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.